as 2016 began, excitement continued to build as the March 25th release date of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice approached. A third trailer would drop right before the New Year, showcasing Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman and a monstrous creature that many fans predicted was Doomsday, the infamous creature that killed Superman in the comics. Production of Zack's sequel films, Justice League Parts 1 and 2, were about to kick into full swing as everything looked optimistic for the future of the DC Extended Universe. However, things were going to take a dramatic turn for director Zack Snyder as March 25th approached. On March 22nd, 2015, the review embargo lifted for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Audiences were excited to see what critics would say about the much-anticipated cinema event. What followed next would surprise the world. To put it simply, critics did not like Batman v Superman. The overwhelmingly negative reviews gave the film a shockingly low 28% score on Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes is an aggregate site that gives a percentage score based on positive reviews over the total sum of reviews. Essentially, three out of every four critics the website recorded gave the film a bad review. In the past, Zack Snyder's films had been divisive. However, his big-budget films such as Dawn of the Dead, 300, Watchmen, and Man of Steel had garnered generally favorable reviews. Batman v Superman scores would trigger a level of panic as the studios feared that Zack's vision was not connecting with audiences. The box office isn't as quite as high as they wanted it. A month later, Civil War comes out. Warner Brothers, who has essentially, you know, made Zack the captain of the DCEU, completely panics. They panic at the Rotten Tomato score. They panic at the online rants. And they decide while they're in the middle of filming a $300 million movie that they're now going to course correct. Nevertheless, fans around the world turned out to see the film and delivered a colossal $254 million opening weekend. While this was a monumental success, studios and speculators noted that perhaps the film had underperformed given the excitement that had been building for years. The film was meant to shatter all box office records but its opening weekend numbers were behind both Avengers films and the previous year's Jurassic World. It was evident that the overwhelmingly negative reviews had affected opening weekend. Yet what would hurt the film more was the very vocal backlash from fans. Though the film had a B score from audiences on CinemaScore and a 62% fan score on Rotten Tomatoes, a large swath of fans saturated social media with negative reviews and rants on how the film had betrayed their hopes. Whilst critics called the story muddled, confusing, and macabre, fans felt the story of a darker Superman and a murdering Batman was a direct contrast to their comic book counterparts. They also felt the story was unnecessarily complicated, a sentiment echoed by critics who called the plot slow and pessimistic. Meanwhile, fans of the film celebrated Snyder's vision and felt that perhaps naysayers did not understand the complexities of the film. Defenders cited the religious themes and imagery that overlay political themes of immigration, collateral damage, and corporate manipulation of government. Despite the divisive nature of the film, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice would gross a whopping $873 million globally, making it one of the highest grossing films of the year. However, the studio's fear of the dreaded Rotten Tomatoes score would be exacerbated by the success of the next Marvel film. Why? Because they looked at Marvel. Marvel's movies are fun. They're family friendly. The villains aren't scary. There's not much of a threat. Maybe a handful of people die here and there. Um, Zack wanted to do a deconstructionist film, breaking down who is Superman, who is Batman, who are these characters in our world? And when Warner Brothers saw that that wasn't connecting with the number of audiences that they wanted it to connect to, they immediately panicked, tried to re-steer the ship, and tried to make a movie by committee. In essence, trying to make a Marvel movie while you're in the middle of making a Zack Snyder movie. And if there's anything that is the opposite of a Marvel movie, it's a Zack Snyder film. Captain America Civil War was released on May 6 of 2016, to universal acclaim and box office success. 
Any fear of a Marvel fatigue setting in was immediately expunged by the mega smash hit, which arguably reignited and expanded the love of Marvel films. The film would go on to gross $1.1 billion globally and become the highest grossing film of 2016. At this point, Zack was already a few weeks in a production of Justice League. However, the studio felt change was needed, and on a dark note, with the death of Lois Lane at the hands of Darkseid, and help set up the horrific post-apocalyptic world first seen in Bruce Wayne's nightmare sequence in Batman v Superman. However, the low critical score and divisive fan reaction worried the studio about their future cinematic endeavors. They felt that Zack's dark and grim take was alienating fans and children who were more accustomed to the family-friendlier Marvel films. In May 2016, Steps were taken as acclaimed comic book writer Jeff Johns, who had worked on the wildly successful Arrow for the CW, and producer John Berg took charge of the DCEU to help balance Zack's vision with something that would connect better to comic book fans and general audiences. Zack and Chris's initial script was abandoned and major course corrections were made. Suicide Squad, which had wrapped up filming prior to the production of Justice League, would also be heavily altered to get away from the adult-oriented vision established by director David Ayer. Trailer Park, the company which had shaped the wildly successful trailer for Suicide Squad, was asked to re-edit the film into a more fun and boisterous one. This new cut of Suicide Squad would remove the introduction of Steppenwolf and any plot threads that would be continued in Justice League. Snyder's new script still aimed to be a juggernaut of a film, as it would explore the origin stories of new characters such as Cyborg, The Flash, and Aquaman. Their personal story arcs would help world-build the DCEU and perhaps even introduce a seventh member of the Justice League, as teased in posters released in early 2015. Nevertheless, the planned outlines for a second and third Justice League films were completely scrapped and scripts were never completed. Going into summer 2016, Jeff Johns and Zack would work towards a single Justice League film. And as filming continued, Zack would surprise the fans at Comic-Con in July with a teaser for Justice League. The teaser, accompanied by the White Stripes' icky thump, gave audiences their first real look at the Justice League. Fans again were split over the look and feel of the trailer. The fans who loved Dawn of Justice were ready for more of Zack's vision. On the other hand, fans who were disappointed in the film looked at the trailer with great skepticism. But with Jeff Johns and John Berg guiding the new film, there was still confidence it would deliver what audiences wanted come 2017. Hope remained strong as fans anticipated Suicide Squad on the 1st of August. However, like Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, critics again would shower a DCEU film with overwhelmingly negative reviews. The film would score very similar to Batman v Superman, settling at 27% on Rotten Tomatoes. On the other hand, while there was some division amongst fans over Suicide Squad, the feeling was more positive as younger fans helped drive merchandise sales through the roof. The film would finish with a strong $746.8 million box office haul, outperforming the DCEU's first film, Man of Steel, by over $100 million. At this point, Warner Brothers was beginning to feel the pressure of Rotten Tomatoes. Once, the aggregate site was purely meant as an insight on how a film averaged among critics. Now, it was a powerful social media tool that fans and YouTubers had weaponized. However, as the fall of 2016 approached, a development from earlier in July would slowly appear to shift the tides. Yet, with studios trying to appease fans and critics, the next few months would prove difficult for the production of Justice League and place pressure on its director, Zack Snyder. On July 16, 2016, only six days before the teaser of Justice League was revealed, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice was released on DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K. An Ultimate Edition was also released, with 30 minutes of extra footage bringing the film's runtime to slightly over three hours. Audiences had a chance to watch the movie as Zack Snyder had originally intended. According to sources, 
This was the version of the film that executives back in 2015 had greeted with a standing ovation. Prior to the release of the Ultimate Edition, many were skeptical that an additional 30 minutes would not make much of a difference to the film. However, upon release, the three-hour Ultimate Edition would have a strong impact. As the fall started, the improvements of the Ultimate Edition spread online and across the world. The message was simple. The Ultimate Edition of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice was a vastly superior version of the film. Many critics, professional and amateur, were quick to praise how the film's pacing, story, and character arcs dramatically improved. Scenes that had previously lacked framework were now given concrete context and meaning. The 30 minutes not only improved the film overall, they improved many scenes from the theatrical version that were heavily ostracized. Whilst the film still had ample amounts of critics who felt the Ultimate Edition did not fix many issues, there was a greater appreciation, in general, that Zack had made an excellent movie. It was becoming evident that the director was at his best when his films remain uncut and untampered with. Seven years earlier, when Zack made a feature film of the celebrated graphic novel The Watchmen, his theatrical version was not as celebrated as the subsequent director's cut that was released on DVD and Blu-ray. As was with the case of The Watchmen's director's cut, it again became apparent with the Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition that Zack's cut scenes were necessary to the rhythm and flow of his narrative. Filming of Justice League would continue throughout 2016 with rewrites by Jeff Johns, an oversight by producer John Berg, forging a newer, optimistic version of Justice League. For the moment, it seemed, Justice League was going to be ready for the world to see in 2017. However, things were about to take a turn for the worse for the production and its director. She tied you to a kitchen chair, she broke your throat. 